Hey guys, it's Brad. Thanks for checking out this video series. So uh, I'm sitting out on our completed screen porch. Um, as you'll see on my channel, I do a lot of projects for various things. And um, took me about, I started uh, this project at the beginning of March, uh, right before all the COVID crap hit the fan. Um, and ended up being a project that we did throughout the whole COVID thing. And then uh, took me, uh, finished it up right at the beginning of May. Um, so took me almost, um, two, almost two months. I think I finished it May 4th. I started it on, I think it was March 8th. Uh, so it took me almost two full, two full months to do it. Pretty much did just about everything by myself. I did have the help of uh, a buddy of mine uh, when we were doing the foundation pour, and uh, my dad helped me a little bit at, in the early stages of the project, um, just to, kind of as a helping hand. My dad's getting a little bit older. He's in his early 60s, and he can't do as much of the physical labor as he used to be able to do. Uh, that's kind of where I learned a lot of my DIY stuff was growing up, uh, always doing projects with my parents. We always had some kind of project going on at the house. Um, I do like the DIY, although um, you'll hear me mention this in some of the videos. Um, you're wondering, you know, some of you may wonder what I do for a living. So I actually flip houses for a living. Uh, I predominantly wholesale houses, uh, although I do do some fix and flips. I've, I've found that I actually, despite watching my channel and all the projects I do, I do not enjoy flipping houses in the sense that most everyone is used to uh, where they see it on uh, on TV. Uh, that's not what flipping, that's that's TV, that's not real life. So um, I do flip houses um, and uh, mostly predominantly wholesale those houses where I basically buy the house directly from a seller and then I um, basically resell that house to another investor, whether that investor is a buy and hold landlord um, or they are flipping the house uh, to rehab it. Um, I do rehab houses, um, but I only do houses that are close to home when I get stuff around here uh, because I'm managing the project. Uh, I do, ironically, I, I subcontract everything out of my flips uh, because when you're doing flips, time is money and I don't have time, although I'm capable of doing the projects myself, um, these flips cost me a lot of money. I have one, for example, right now. It's uh, We have it up for sale. It's almost a half a million dollar house. This house costs me $100 a day to hold this house. I don't have time to do these projects myself, so I subcontract everything out. But uh, anyways, uh, thanks for checking out the video. Um, I've got some other uh, build series I'm doing. Um, we'll give you a little sneak peek in here. Um, since I finished that, there's my camera there. Uh, we've actually added two more windows in the side of the house. I'll do another build series on that. Um, got a lot of camera footage for that, and I'll produce that. But the screen porch is awesome. Love it. Enjoying it. It's beautiful. This is a sneak peek of the, the finished product product there. Uh, but thanks for checking out the video, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm going to split it up into some parts. Um, I didn't do a, really any time-lapse videos through this whole thing just because I don't have the camera capacity, nor did I. I always forget to set up a camera when I'm doing it. So a lot of it is sort of recap videos of, and, and then there would be some kind of progress photos uh, in between, uh, but it's mostly recap photo, recap videos of what I did each day. I basically worked on it almost every single day for those, um, for those two months. There were probably maybe a, a grand total of about maybe five to six days where I didn't work on it due to rain. Um, and then also about uh, towards the beginning of the project, ended up getting a stomach virus that knocked me on my rear end for two days. Didn't make any progress during that stomach virus. So, um, But anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, you'll see more projects from me in the future. Thanks. Honey, he hit me with his he didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> Alright guys, so the screen porch project has begun. Um, so a little bit about what we're going to do. We're going to leave the existing deck here. Um, I added that deck on last spring. That's going to stay there. This whole part is going to get screened in. So what I'm actually going to do is essentially, um, originally I thought I was going to have to rebuild this deck and whatnot because these footings under here are not adequate to support a roof structure. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm pouring new footings. I came out three feet. 
Um, so we're going to extend the deck. That existing deck is 10 and a half feet from the outside edge of that beam all the way back to the uh, house. So now we'll be at 13 and a half feet deep. And then the deck is 16 feet, seven inches across there. I'm, it annoys me that they built it 16, seven because a lot of, you know, dimensional lumber comes in 16 foot lengths. So to get 20 foot linked pieces of lumber at the special order of those, because I don't want to actually have a seam. And when they built my deck, they put a seam right there. That post is not centered, which is annoying. So this post will be centered. And um, what I'm actually doing is uh, I dug the footings today. So these are approximately, it's uh, basically 18 inches. This I'm on a slope here, um, as you can see. You can see we're on a slope. So it's 18 inches to the bottom of the hole, basically to grade right there. It's like 26 inches all the way up to there. And then this will be, uh, this is uh, 20 inches across by 20 inches across, 20 inches square. And then I made myself a little uh, stick there that basically I took 36 inches and then I came in uh, basically half the width of a six by six and put my line there. And it's, it's exactly centered. You see that little block there is actually the width of a six by six. Um, and it's right at the outside edge of the deck and um, it's gonna drop all the way down here. So that tells me exactly, there's a plumb bob there to tell me exactly where the center of this footing needs to be. I'll do the same there. I'll just move this string as I go down. I still have to dig that hole. Um, unfortunately, you guys remember my other project where I did this retaining wall a couple months ago. I had to kind of remove some of this because the new footing's gotta go right there. I, I knew that all along, but it was pretty easy to remove this and slide it out of the way. So we're building an extension out. We're putting new footings, 20 inch square footings by essentially uh, 18 inches deep um, at their, from grade down 18 inches deep. Um, so they'll be pretty hefty footings. I'll put rebar in them and pour a lot of concrete. I went and bought a Harbor Freight um, concrete mixer today and I'm gonna set it up, up at the top of the driveway, load all my concrete straight off my trailer into the mixer, mix it and then wheelbarrow it down the hill that way i'm not carrying 80 pound bags of concrete which is not fun so i'll get i'll pour concrete tomorrow uh it's uh getting a little bit late i'm gonna try to get all these forms set up today i probably won't finish this hole tonight i'll dig that hole tomorrow morning set up some forms tomorrow morning and then i'll start mixing concrete tomorrow i'll go buy basically like a pallet of concrete and uh start mixing that up and pouring it in the hole and getting that set. And then, you know, sometime next week I'll get started on building everything. All my lumber is going to get delivered this week. So uh, the porch again will be 13 and a half feet out by essentially 16 feet, seven inches wide. Um, and the ceilings out there will be nine foot tall ceilings. I'm just going to do a flat ceiling. We're doing a shed roof on there. Um, the roof will basically come out to just a few inches, about three, four inches underneath those windows there. Shed roof will just come out this way. Um, so we'll put, a, I'll have to pull off the siding there and we'll put a ledger up on the house and then a second ledger below to support the flat uh, joists. And then you'll have the rafters attached to the upper ledger. Um, and then we'll, we'll do uh, three six by six posts here on the outside edge. I'll do a, um, a uh, triple uh, two by eight beam across the middle that will span all the way across. It'll be supported in the middle. And then we'll put some intermediate posts um, just probably out of uh, like a four by four or something in the middle. Not really intended to be support posts, more for uh, making the screen units a little bit smaller. Um, and uh, I'll build the screens. Uh, they sell the little metal extruded metal uh, things at uh, Home Depot and Lowe's and you just connect the corners together and put the screen in, spline it. So I'll get all the screens, That's but that's the very, literally the last thing I'll do is building the screens. So yeah, we're gonna have a shed roof on there. I'm doing a metal uh, ribbed, kind of like a um, uh, exposed fastener, metal ribbed, metal roofing. A buddy of mine owns a roofing company and he actually told me he's got about 800 square feet of metal roofing hanging out behind his house. He doesn't need any more. It was from another project and it was just left over. And so I'm actually going to use that metal roofing from that, which will be nice. And um, this will be all nice once it's done. We'll do a beadboard ceiling in there to match the rest of our porches that have beadboard ceilings. Um, and then uh, again, we're building 
basically a whole nother deck out here. I'm going to put another beam across there and then we'll just run joists across to this existing beam. So I have to pull this railing off. I'll have to pull these supports off and move them. Um, and then we'll take that light off and then we'll basically just hang joists in between basically building like a little miniature deck in between to extend this deck out which allows me to have a continuous load path from the roof beam all the way down to the footing because you are required to have a continuous load path um, from top to bottom and uh yeah so that's that i'll be posting more videos as i go you can see this area is still all messed up from when i did my retaining wall project here uh, we're going to be working on a lot of projects over the next um, uh, couple months, getting this house ready to put on the market for sale. And All right, so just uh, poured the last of the concrete and the footings here. Um, used uh, the old Harbor Freight concrete mixer went and bought one yesterday put it together today um basically worked out to we had 11 bags of concrete in that hole so that hole was like 18 inches from the bottom edge of grade down so it was like 26 inches up there by 20 inches square pretty big hole i put uh four foot uh pieces of rebar i put four four foot pieces of rebar down half inch rebar pounded them into the ground at just just below the surface there and then I built a cage of half inch, I used 18 inch uh, pieces of rebar and built a, ca a lower cage and an upper cage um, in each hole. So these are rebarred into the ground and that. These things are not going anywhere. Um, so put those footings in. Um, my buddy came over and helped me. We had a pretty good system going. He was up there um, in the driveway with the mixer. We had to put the mixer like right next to the trailer. And we had the the um, concrete on the trailer. He just load it right on top of the mixer, so he had to just basically lift it up off the ground, and that's it. And I carry it any distance, mix it up. We were doing two two eighty pound bags at a time in that mixer, and then I would come up and I was the wheelbarrow runner. I'd run it down with the wheelbarrow, dump it in the hole, um, get the air bubbles out, poke it around, you know, get the air bubbles out, and then um, come back. And by the time I was done with that, he was done, ready for another load, and we just kind of had a little system going. It was pretty nice. So. Got the footings in we'll let those set up for a few days um realistically i probably won't work on anything until next weekend or late next late this upcoming week it's supposed to rain again on tuesday so um but uh glad to have the footings in these are going to be pretty solid again they're 18 inches deep from the lowest point underground so i mean they're roughly 24 inches that one's 26 inches deep um, that one's, uh, the gra grade's a little bit more level there. So that one's probably closer to like maybe 22 inches deep, um, to the top edge. Um, and then below grade, it's, it's obviously, uh, 18 inches below grade and then it's 20 inches square. Um, so, uh, yeah, turned out nice. Um, we'll let these set up. I gotta go clean up a little bit, clean up the concrete mixer and all that jazz. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> call it a day. All right, guys. I made a mistake and I'm going to own up to my mistake. So when I was pouring all this concrete, I, um, I already had a few bags of concrete in the garage and I wasn't sure whether I needed them and I had them as backup. So I went to and, and bought, you know, 24 bags of fresh concrete. Um, I ended up having to use three of those, bags I had in the garage and they were probably about nine months old I guess they've been sitting in my garage they had kind, like sort of hardened up but not really like you could break it apart or whatever and I decided to like I ran out and I didn't want to go to the store so I bought those or I used those other ones up and this is what happened this footing didn't cure properly look at this like this I poured this concrete on Sunday, and it's now Wednesday. So here's a footing from the old the old stuff, right? Look at that. I can't. I can't. That's solid, right? I could, like a break trying to break this corner off. I mean there's a little bit, it's a little brittle on the corner, but that's typical for a corner. Like I'm pushing with all my weight on that. 
and you notice how those are like a lighter color and these are a lighter color and that's still a dark color so basically what i'm gonna have to do is take my demo hammer and i'm gonna demo out the top little bit of this um i mean basically uh there was about three bags here i used three bags so there's three bags worth of concrete on the top that's old concrete it might just be the top bag maybe the last one i used wasn't uh wasn't cured but as you can see here i'm like sticking a, a screw well on that part yeah look at that no bueno so the moral of the story is don't use old bags of concrete for i mean you could use them as like backfill for something but if you're doing anything structural like this don't use an old bag of concrete um basically i was doing some research last night online and what happened was that all the portland cement in the concrete mix um activated and solidified and cured uh with the moisture in the air um and uh basically all that was left was sand and aggregate and a little bit of cement i mean this is harder but it still shouldn't do this i shouldn't be able to take a screwdriver and chip this out so moral of the story today don't use old bags of concrete all right looks like i didn't have to go very deep um this bosch demo hammer is awesome i've only been working on this for about 20 minutes and i think i've pretty much gotten down to solid stuff um my screwdriver here it is that stuff we got a little bit more here but as you can see in this stuff we're getting down to solid and when i uh hit a hammer on some of this it's pretty pretty solid so i'm just gonna chisel off a little bit more of this top layer and i think i'm kind of down to the solid stuff um as you can see here we've uh, you can kind of sort of see the rebar cage that i put in there i'll put some new ties on this just to make sure it's solid but um that's it um that's kind of how i did the rebar cage inside and uh what we'll do is i'll have to go i still haven't bought any concrete yet i gotta go run to the store and get some concrete but um there's usually a um uh bonding agent that you can put kind of between the two so i'm gonna get some bonding agent to kind of apply to the surface i'm using the air compressor to out and then i'll pour a little bit of concrete i'm only thinking i mean this is probably only two bags worth on top so i guess it was those last the last two bags i put in were probably the the culprit so like that's really solid right there that piece is solid there's a little bit of loose stuff right in here but i'm getting into pretty solid stuff as i'm chipping away you can kind of tell the tone of the the tone of the uh demo hammer and how easily it pumps through it um, when you get into the hard stuff it it takes a little bit more effort and the, the sound or the tone of the chiseling changes. So we'll bust all that apart. I'll put some new forms in, put some bonding agent on, pour some new concrete on top. And I mean, like we've got still a good, you know, 15, 16 inches of concrete under here. So that's all solid. So, so uh, what I just added to this, um, so I chiseled it out until I got down to the hard concrete, uh, chiseled out, you know, basically the top, I don't know, eight inches or so of it and then i went and got some of this uh, concrete bonding primer additive and um so we basically just added that um into the mix here or not in the mix but i just brushed it on top of the old concrete and then i'm about to go mix up all the new concrete and then we'll pour the new concrete right on top of that and myself a little dam here out of some dirt and whatnot and now we're ready to pour so all right so poured it again put three bags three 80 pound bags in here i uh wasn't quite all the way to the top but that's okay not a big deal so three 80 pound bags poured them in there and uh this was fresh concrete so hopefully this will set up and turn out nice like that did so all right.